acknowledge I'm only doing this to myself. But before we get going, coffee. Cheers, good morning. This is gonna be an interesting video. Basically, I had this idea and it could exist somewhere. I've just never seen it before. We are checking in on what's been checked out from my library. Here's the problem. You know when you see a book at the library that you want and there's a wait on it and so you put it on hold because it's gonna be a while and then as time progresses, you kind of forget about what's going on on your holds list. My holds list exploded a little bit in that apparently I had a whole bunch come in at one time. <laughs> so I have not even just these, I have still on my shelf four of the Women's Prize Longlist books that I need to get through. And then I have 15 other books here that I somehow need to get through. Some of them I'm excited about, some of them I'm not sure, I might have to take back and then just put them on hold again. That's okay, that's what the library is for. But let's go through the books that I have here and whether or not I can remember why I even check them out. But we'll start at the bottom, at the top. And this is Anita DeMont Lasts, Laughs Last by Chidol Gonzala. And this one was on one of my anticipated reads list, which means it's pretty new. I actually think I got it. Like, I'm probably one of the first ones to have gotten this out. I think I saw that it was on order when I put it on hold. So I'm quite excited to see what this is about. I don't know really what it's about, but um, I think it's about a woman who discovers another artist and there's some similarities in their lives. So I am excited to read this. I didn't realize it was a Reese's Club pick, but this is one that is going to stay, but it has holds. So it is on a time crunch. All the Little Bird Hearts by Victoria Lloyd Barlow. This was nominated for the Booker Prize. And so I have been wanting to read this for a long time. And I don't think my library had it for the longest time. So I have finally been able to get a copy of it. And this is about, I think, a mother who has autism. Um, and then neighbors move in and she thinks that they're being nice. But I guess there's some other stuff going on. So I am another book that is going to stay. This book I'm actually really excited about, Moon of the Turning Leaves by Wabgeshki Rice. I read the first book of this series, which was Moon of the Crested Snow, and they can kind of be read as standalones, like Moon of the Crested Snow did wrap up, but I guess this is a continuation of the story a while later, because Moon of the Crested Snow was published quite a few years ago, I believe. And what you're doing is you're in Northern Ontario on a res reservation land, essentially, and kind of this apocalypse come, apocalypse Glyph starts and it's kind of reminds me a little bit of what's that book at the end of the world where you don't really know what's happening but you know something is happening and there's a really tense undertone and little snippets of news are getting through about just weird things happening and so that was what the first book was and I guess this one is about them realizing they need to move out from where they are because they just they're not they can't survive anymore the way they have been surviving. So it's a continuation of that story. Moon on the Crested Snow read pretty quickly. So I'm hoping that this one will too. So this is definitely on my must stay list. Um, it was also new. So I, it was, I was waiting for it to come in from the library. We have The Storm We Made by Vanessa Chan. So I put this on hold quite a while ago. Um, Simon from Savage Reads. Sorry, pause. Simon from Savage Reads read this at the beginning of the year and he loved it. And then a ton of people put it on their predictions list for the Women's Prize in Fiction. So it's another book that I've been waiting for a while for it to come in, but it is possibly one simply because the Women's Prize for Fiction I'm finding to be really heavy. And I think this one is as well. This might be one that I take back and then put myself back on the holds list. We'll, we'll see how my reading progresses over the next little bit. Wind Stand. Oh, this is, um, follows, um, this is Malaysian. 
a Malaysian woman, and I think something happens to her and she thinks it's happening to her as kind of retribution for some actions that she did in the past. So it does sound really great. It definitely sounds like a book I want to read. I just don't know that I can make the time for it right now. Wind, Sand and Stars by Antoine de saint Exupéry. I have renewed this book two, possibly going on three times. I just don't know if it's gonna make the cut. I feel like if it's been sitting on my shelf as long as it has and I haven't touched it, then maybe that's a sign. I don't even know what it's about, but I think, yeah, I have no idea what it's about, but it's a book that always shows up on like best classics lists and I think that's why I picked it up. Another book that I remember putting on my list, The Parliament by Amy Pakwaktka but I don't remember where I heard of this. Is it a Canadian book? No. Uh, the first little sentence is, murder owls are extreme, Jude said. What's more extreme than murder owls? So again, something to do with owls. Don't know what it's about, seems creepy. It is one that I cannot renew and is needs to go back in four days or something. So it's gotta be put at the top, top of the list if I wanna read this. How to Say Babylon by Safia Sinclair. I think this was nominated for the Women's Prize of Nonfiction, but I had picked this up because I think Kayla from Books and Bala read this and really enjoyed it. So I've been waiting for a while for this one. It might be one that I try to get in audio and then put myself on hold for that. We will see how that goes. Another book that has a gazillion people waiting for it, so I need to read it fast, but I think I can read this one pretty quickly, is First Lie Wins, another Reese's pick by Ashley Elston. And this is a thriller. So I'm not really sure when I will get to it, but it is one that I should be able to read fairly quickly and I think would be good to add to the mix of stuff that I'm reading right now. Because like I said, a lot of the stuff I'm reading is pretty intense topic matter and I think throwing a thriller in there would be great. So this is a book that is due back in four days I didn't realize how long it was, it's 600 something pages. And I am, I actually started it yesterday, I'm 119 pages in and I'm really enjoying it, but I just don't know if I'm gonna get it finished and I don't wanna put it back on hold because I waited for forever for this to come in and that is The Book of Love by Kelly Link. And so far you're following these three people, kind of four really, and they appear in a school classroom and they've been dead for a year. And all of a sudden they appear and they're like, what is happening? And essentially, in order for them to stay on Earth, they kind of strike a deal, but they don't really know what the deal is. It sounds like there's gonna be some magic and there's some games and stuff that they're gonna to have to win or compete in order to stay on Earth and not be dead again. It sounds really intriguing. So far, it's been really great. And the goal is to finish it, but four days, this is due back in four days. I have a women's prize book that's due back in four days. The time crunch is real. Okay, another book or book. I think this is the winner actually, Prophet Song by Paul Lynch. I have been on hold that long to get my hands on this book, which means I definitely wanna read it. I don't wanna go back on hold. And this is about a woman whose husband goes missing. I think it's a political story in Ireland, Dublin. Yeah, Ireland. And that's all I know. Again, it did win the international booker now. If you've been around for a while, you know, the International Booker and I were not friends this year. <laughs> very, very few of the books worked for me. I didn't like most of them. I DNF'd a few, and a lot of them I thought, I wish I had DNF'd. So I do have high hopes for this book, but I'm also going in with a little bit of trepidation because that list and I just really did not get along. Let's go with this little mini guy. I didn't know how small this was. I could probably get this out in like 20 minutes. The English Understand Wool by Helen DeWitt. And I'll be honest, I don't know why I have this on my holds list. I don't remember who I heard it from. I don't remember what it's about, but it's a tiny little thing. So I'll give it a go. This is another one of those books I picked up on a whim simply because I needed to add some lightness to my reading. The first book of this series I actually didn't love 
And so I had no intention of picking up the second, but when I saw it on the shelves, I just thought, just, just grab it in case you just need a little bit of a break. It is long, but it's, it's the uh, All the Hidden Paths by Foz Meadow, and it is the sequel to A Strange and Stubborn Endurance, which is like, it doesn't, it's not classified as YA, but it kind of read like YA, and you're following these two characters who get put in an arranged marriage for like political stability, essentially. And so it's like a forced marriage romance between these two men, but also the political undertones and trying to learn to rule and all this stuff. And I thought it was okay, the first one, but the characters weren't that engaging. And there was a lot of talk about a lot of kind of more heavy-handed talk about gender and identity and sexuality and and I, I like that in my books but I found this to be a little heavy-handed in the way it was talking about it personally and so that to me I was like yeah I could it kind of took away from the story personally but I grabbed it because again it could just add a little bit of variety to my reading. The House Made by Frida McFadden. I have never read Frida McFadden before. She is certainly making the rounds. I decided to give The House Made a chance because it is part of my like series to try to finish or series to try to read uh, that I made for myself at the beginning of the year. There is a video on 24 series for 2024 and this was one of them I believe so I did grab that. And then Heartless Hunter by Kristen Sicarelli and this is a I think it's like a romanticy. I just have been wanting to get in to some more adult type romanticy. I don't even know if this is adult. Is this adult? It doesn't say. But I used to really like the genre when I read a lot of YA. And I have since moved out of YA. I don't read a lot of it. I don't typically enjoy it so much anymore. But for some reason I left that genre behind in the YA sphere. And I've decided this year that I just want to see if there's any in the more adult books that I could enjoy. And so this is one of them. And I am excited about it. It's a really pretty cover though. And um, it's part of a, it must be a trilogy or something because this is book one. I don't love starting series when only one book has been released, but we'll see how it goes. Anyways, those are the books I have out from the library right now. I think I have a couple on my ebook and I have the rest of the Women's Prize in fiction. I don't know, like, <laughs> Does anybody else do this where your hold list just all of a sudden all of them seem to come in at once and you're left wondering how am I supposed to do this? And then when I looked this morning, I'm number one on like five more books. I'm just waiting to be the next the next one to be returned and it's coming to me. So I think I need to make a game plan. I think the plan is I do want to read this. I don't want to send it back. I might, if I get a chance, do this one. But if I don't, I will just re- um, I'll just put myself back on the holds list for this. That'll be fine because I do want to finish off the books that I have for the Women's Prize in Fiction this week. And that is, I have four in physical and I'm on hold for a couple of more as eBooks, I think. So I at least want to get those four done because I'd like to have that done by the end of the week. Oh gosh, guys, we'll see. Anyways, tell me how your reading is going right now. Any like insane, like when you go to the library and you don't, you're no longer on the hold shelf, you've been given an entire shelf on a separate cart somewhere. I think that's a sign that you um, maybe are taking on more than you can read. <laughs> maybe. But I think I'm excited to have them. And like I said, it's the one perk about the library. I can take them back and I can just put them on hold again. And I haven't spent much money on these at all. Just taxes, I guess. Anyways. I hope you all have lovely days and I will see you in the next video. Bye.